T minus two minutes. This is the launch of module two of what will become Paliac Station Around the Moon. This is the first launch for the EDB in many months since the start of the Hyperion investigation and the first ever night launch for the Bureau. It comes at a time of uncertainty for the EDB as Werner von Kerman insists that the best way forward is to continue development and testing of the Saturn C4X which would be able to carry over 90 tons into low earth orbit. While many in the agency feel that there are no contracts to support such a large launcher, and uh, among those is Jeb Kerman. This launch was funded by Jeb Kerman, and it features a Saturn 9 rocket capable of lifting 22 tons into low Earth orbit. And we also have new telemetry displays for you, so you'll be able to see that during the launch. The module being lifted to low Earth orbit is at the capacity for the Saturn 9 launcher and so the margins are fairly tight for this mission. We will be discussing more about the nature of this mission during the launch, but now let's focus on the countdown here as we are at T minus 50 seconds. T minus 40. T minus 30, all systems are still go for the Paliac Module 2 aboard the Saturn 9 rocket. T minus 20. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, engine ignition, one, and liftoff. We have liftoff, and the tower is clear. Liftoff of the Paliac Module 2 aboard the Saturn 9 rocket bound for the moon. Here we have the telemetry display as you can see, and the view from the rocket. The Paliac Module 2 does not have a camera of its own, so we will not be able to bring anything more than a simulated view of that part of the mission. But for now, we have the onboard cameras, both here and in the, in the J2 compartment at the bottom of the second stage. T plus 40 seconds, 2,676 meters in altitude. And continuing, unfortunately, the telemetry display is set to surface speed, so we don't have a good read on the surface velocity. The surface speed, of course, is simply the horizontal component of the velocity and that is not a very much use here but we are passing Mach 1 now now 1 minute and 5 seconds 8332 meters we are past max Q the region of maximum dynamic pressure it should be noted that the mission elapsed time you see on the telemetry data screen may not be accurate we're at T plus 1 minute and 15 seconds T plus 1 minute and 30 seconds, rocket is now at 20.8 kilometers in altitude and approximately 12 kilometers downrange. Despite some oscillations in the pitch profile, the trajectory looks nominal and the rocket looks stable as it proceeds through the latter half of the first stage burn here. T plus 2 minutes, 40 kilometers in altitude, 23 kilometers downrange. We are expecting first stage cutout in approximately 15 seconds. 10 seconds to first stage cutout. Rocket is now 63 kilometers in altitude. First stage out. First stage set. And the second stage is lit at T plus 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Rocket is now an altitude of 86 kilometers. Now approximately 90 kilometers downrange. 
T plus three minutes. The telemetry data is severely delayed at this time, and the data that you see is likely closer to the displayed elapsed time than the current time, though the displayed elapsed time may still be further behind than the actual data. Um, we are waiting for fairing separation here, and we have confirmation of fairing separation. So the mission is well underway now. The second stage will burn for 7 minutes and 45 seconds. And so we have some time to talk more about the mission. And so once again, it was funded by Jebediah uh, Kerman uh, through uh, his junkyard and spaceship parts company, as well as his profits from speculative ventures, including options traded in Tesla Motors in Solar City. This is the first of three uh, Jeb funded missions, and they are all to do with expanding the Paliac fuel depot into a Paliac station around the moon. As a result, the Paliac station will not only supply various vessels with monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide, it will also be able to refine kethane, which will be mined on the moon. That is the prospective goal of all of this. And also uh, host uh, kerbals or humans in, in a small habitat on board the station. And so that is the goal of this. This is the first three launches, as I said. This launch will attempt to get this module, which is a Kethane conversion module, into orbit around the moon, a loose orbit. And then the second launch will involve a Saturn 1H rocket that will attempt to get four satellites into orbit around the moon to facilitate communications. As of right now, there isn't sufficient communications around the moon to allow this module to dock with the Paliac fuel depot. And so, and of course, the fuel depot was meant more for supplying manned missions uh, in order so that the manned missions can return. And so, we need the satellites there in order to uh, facilitate communications for the docking, especially on the, on the side away from Earth. And so, that will be the second mission to launch those satellites. The third mission will launch the crewed module. Uh, it will be launched unmanned, uh, but it will be able will have the necessary supplies to host a reasonable crew of up to four individuals. It will have food, water, and oxygen for them, and they will be able to conduct further missions around the moon concerning the mining of kethane and refining of kethane into liquid methane and liquid oxygen. And that's important. This module converts the kethane into liquid methane liquid oxygen. It has uh, an empty liquid methane liquid oxygen tank in addition to its monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide tanks which are full and so it is ready to convert the kethane to those fuels. Now we don't really have engines that burn liquid methane and liquid oxygen at this time so that will have to be something that gets developed and so that's sort of another branch of development for the EDB in addition to the rocket developments that Werner von Kerman is advocating with the Saturn C4X. We are 6 minutes and 40 seconds into this launch and the rocket has reached its target altitude and is now burning for horizontal velocity. Still have surface speed displayed there but now the surface speed is more in line with with the actual surface velocity because the rocket no longer has much vertical velocity with respect to the surface. And so the target altitude for its periapsis is approximately 220 kilometers. Its apoapsis will be uh, substantially higher than that as it will be subsequently burning at periapsis to transfer to the moon. A little less than three minutes left in this second stage burn and the rocket will hold close to its apoapsis here for an extended period of time as it makes up the velocity needed to make orbit. While this is a very outgoing sequence of missions, it is also an extremely risky one because while Jeb can fund these three missions, he cannot continue funding missions like this. And so the question is whether there will be any follow-up to these efforts or whether Paliac Station, as it were, will simply remain dormant in orbit around the moon. 
And so we'll have to see whether the space agencies collectively or various private organizations will see fit to fund further missions to take advantage of the new resource, assuming that all these missions are successful and they are dependent on one another. Um, if they are successful, then maybe we will see private industry take a, take a look at the possibilities or perhaps some space agencies to do so. But at this point, there's no indication of that. But uh, if there's anything for certain, Jeb is not averse to taking risks, and he has been spectacularly successful with the risks he has taken. T plus 8 minutes and 40 seconds, the rocket is at an altitude of 227 kilometers, still holding at roughly that altitude, very close to apoapsis. Uh, continuing to burn for greater velocity now past 5 kilometers a second. According to telemetry, the rocket is now more than 1,290 kilometers downrange. This J2 second stage of the Saturn 9 rocket will, of course, get the payload into orbit, the 22 tons into orbit, but uh, most of the 22 tons is, of course, the stage that will bring the actual cathane conversion module and its tanks all the way to the moon and of course maneuver it so that it can get close to Paliac Fuel Depot. The stage that will make the lunar transfer is an Estes 30 kiloton engine from EADS Astrium and the fuel that feeds it is approximately 15.56 tons of monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide. Now of course the with that much fuel, the SS engine will take quite a long time to burn, and so it will not make the full burn to the moon in one burn, it will actually make uh, three burns altogether in order to boost itself and the payload to the moon. And so we will bring you the first of those burns, at least the start of the first of those burns, uh, close to the end of this, this effort to get into orbit as we are nearing orbit here. We see periapsis getting positive here, surface speed exceeding 7 meters per second, and engine cut out. So with that, we look at telemetry and we see apoapsis 378 kilometers, periapsis 189 kilometers, just outside the 183 kilometer safe region. And so we are in a stable orbit with the Paliac Station Module 2. RCS is engaging to stabilize the module as it prepares for separation. Separation has to occur relatively quickly because its first boost, its first burn, is scheduled for only a few minutes after this cutout. So we are currently waiting for that separation. Should be fairly prompt. Simply going through the go no go for separation here. There are many systems on the payload after all, including its its thrusters and such and communications of course and we have separation and its RCS thrusters are pulling it away from the second stage of the Saturn 9 rocket telemetry is good we are still getting telemetry data looks like uh, it's now now on time we are three minutes until the scheduled first burn of the Estes engine in order to boost its orbit to the moon. And we have a solar array extension here. Confirmation that the solar arrays are functional. There's some report of some interference with the antenna on the on the module, but we, we seem to have good telemetry still. Communication is still good. Start of the first burn is scheduled for T plus 14 minutes and 45 seconds. You can see that the altitude of the craft is still decreasing as it is actually approaching its periapsis now. And so the goal is to make the burn as close to periapsis as possible. There's a good simulated view of of the way it looks as the 
second stage of the Saturn 9 rocket drifts away from from the payload you can see the 15 ton tank of fuel for the SS engine there in in the green light of the module the module of course has lighting in order to facilitate activities and to identify it as part of the station we are one and a half minutes away from the first burn for the moon all systems look good telemetry looks good and there are no reports of anything to prevent proceeding with this burn RCS systems have automatically disengaged as the craft is reported stable Now one minute to the burn. The only suspense now is to see whether the SS engine will light as expected or whether there will be some unforeseen issue but for now all systems with it look to be a go and the pressure is okay. thirty seconds and the program should now activate to reorient the craft to its planned maneuver RCS will fire and we have uh, reports that RCS is firing fine ten seconds five and we have the SS engine lit. SS engine is lit successfully and the second module of what will become Paliac Station is now on its way to the moon. And so we will bring you updates about its progress and especially when it gets into orbit around the moon. We expect that in three days. But for now it looks like uh, Jebediah Kerman's first planned mission to expand facilities around the moon is is at least successful in getting into orbit around earth and lighting its engine for the moon and we will see whether it can continue this success into the later phases of its mission with that and uh, leaving you with the of the site of the module on its way thank you for watching this presentation of a launch from the EDB the first in many months and we hope you enjoyed this broadcast and will join us for future missions from the Elegant Design Bureau. With that, this is the EDB signing off.